All right, it is 2018. Things are moving along. Things are getting better. One of those things that it's getting better are flight controllers. And I think now it is safe to say that flight controllers these days come with an OSD. It's got the PDB built in, meaning you just solder up your ESCs to the flight control itself. And they've even taken it one step further where they try to make it easy for you. And they put all of those pads conveniently in their respective corners. But some flight controllers, some manufacturers, they still manage to this up. I'm gonna have to edit that out later. Sometimes they do something like this. So check out this flight controller. This is an all-in-one, and as you can see from the arrow, this is supposed to point upwards, and at the top here is the USB. So if this was the way they intended it to be, which would be like that, what would happen is you'd have this USB at the front right here. That's not gonna work. I've got a camera here. You can't, you can't get to there easily. If you guys are listening, please. Please put the USB either to the left or to the right, not the top or bottom because really the only time that that works okay for people if they're building a tiny little X frame where it's easy access from all four sides. Left, right, that's it. But if you do have a flight controller that is like this and you need to clock it because you want to keep the wiring nice and clean, such as this, maybe you've got a remix and with the remix you mount everything underneath and so, so you have to route the wires to what's normally one, two, three, four, if you flip it this way, one is now three, three, four is now two. It gets really confusing. I almost confused myself right now. I'm gonna show you a way to do this and kind of not lose your head because I, I still get confused every time I do this. And I feel like if you follow these exact steps, you'll be up and flying in no time. This is your flight controller. And on the flight controller, it says motor one, two, one, two, three, and four but in the flight controller code it's not really one two three and four it's it's this resource number and i'm going to show you what that is right now so take your flight controller plug it into your laptop this is the first thing that you want to do you're going to go ahead and connect you're going to go into your cli and you're going to type in resource now what you want to do is just really take note of these values right here You've got resource number one, two, three, and four, and each of these motors correlates to a value that the flight controller interprets. So this is signal one, signal two, signal three, signal four, and what you wanna do is write this down. So this is default. Right now, motor one is B00. Motor two is gonna be B zero one and then we've got motor number three which is a zero three and now we've got motor four which is a zero two all right so now what you've got is the default motor resource assignment and this is what you want to hold on to because if you screw something up you can always go back to this and fix it so here's what's gonna happen. We've got a quad, right? We're looking at it from the top. Again, this should be the correct orientation. Motors one, two, three, and four. And if you were mounting your flight controller the correct way, this is what it would look like. As you can see, it all lines up one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, and everything is good. But in the case of this, we wanted to correct it by clocking the flight controller 90 degrees counterclockwise so now as you can see you can still wire your motor from here to this point without having to necessarily go all the way out here and keep everything clean but what you're gonna have to now do is tell the flight controller what these new values are one is now going to equal a03 two is now going to equal b00 and so forth and in my opinion this is the surefire way to kind of keep track and not lose your head about doing so so let's jump back into the computer I'll show you all the commands that you need to do to get this to happen. So the first thing you need to do is free up that resource. And this is just what the flight controller code is requiring. It wants you to make sure that that resource allocation or this motor one is free before you can assign it to something else. And the resource command to do that is called resource motor one. I think if you just say none, there you go. So now you can see that it is accepted the command because it says resource is freed. 
So now you just gotta do it for the rest of them to free them all up and then we can reassign those resources. So resource motor two is going to be none, resource motor three, none, resource motor four, none. So now motors one, two, three, and four should be free for you to now reassign as you see fit. Again, if you look back here, here are your new values. So we start off with motor number one is now gonna be A03. So you go back into your CLI command and you're gonna type in this resource motor one is now going to be A03. And when you hit enter, it should give you the confirmation right here that it's been set to that, good to go. So let's do the next one. Resource motor two equals B00. That's this one right here. Resource motor three, right? is now going to become A02. And finally, resource motor four, four is now going to be B01. So once you've typed that all in, you're going to want to hit save, hit enter, all should be good. Now I recommend that you go back into the CLI command, type in resource again, and then go up and just validate that you've actually come out with the new value. So now what you have effectively done is you have told the flight controller that each signal pad is now something else. Basically we clocked everything 90 degrees, but what we also haven't done yet is tell Betaflight or your software that the gyro is also now clocked negative 90 degrees. So to do that, you wanna go into configuration and then you will go down here where it says board and sensor alignment. In this case, we took this flight controller, right? This is the normal, and we clocked it 90 degrees counterclockwise, which translates to a value of negative 90, right? Counterclockwise. So you're gonna go into this yaw value and type in negative 90, and then you're gonna hit save. So once you do that, you have now successfully done everything that you're supposed to do for all of the changes that you've made. Obviously, you wanna go back into your setup the first thing that I would do is go into this setup screen and just tilt your quad back and forth and make sure that it's actually translating to what it's supposed to be doing, right? The second thing you wanna do to make sure that everything is okay is go into this motor tab, hit this button, spin each one up individually and make sure that motor one, which is supposed to be right here, is actually the motor that is spinning. And once you verify that one, two, three, and four is all good, you are good to go to proceed. So let's go on to the second example. Second example, Here's a remix frame. Here's our illustrative quad. I feel like a I feel like a old like teacher with those that you know the what's that called the uh, the overhead projector. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to simulate uh, the remix, and this is the top view, right? Again, on the remix, you mount the flight controller on, underneath, so you really want to flip everything, right? Eh? Place this down here, and we're taking the flight controller stack and. Normally be mounted like this, we're actually just flipping it over and then setting it down. So this is the new configuration to mount a flight controller to a remix frame or a frame in which you need to basically just flip the flight controller stack upside down. So as you can see, this is the differences. Motor one is now actually motor three, motor three is actually motor one and vice versa. So to do this, you are now just going to go into your resource table and do the same thing, resource motor number one, hit it, set it to none, do that for all four motors, but when you go back to set the new ones, this is your new value. Motor one is now gonna be A03, motor two is now gonna be A02, and so forth. Now, here's the one thing to take note. This is going to be different, like A02, B01, and it's going to differ depending on your flight controller and what software that it's running. So you always want to make this your number one step. And remember, it is not universal. Your flight controller, your software will determine what this value is. So that's it, guys. I hope that makes things a lot easier for you guys that are trying to do some of the more special builds or trying to keep your builds clean. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace out.